Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm taking a look at some fantastic new pellets from QYS, but before that I'm out hunting rabbits on a windy evening. Right, I'm out trying for rabbits this evening and we've actually got a fairly breezy evening for it but I'm hoping I can get around that. Now I'm using the Zebroia Horticia, that's the air rifle for tonight, 177 calibre sub 12 foot pounds. Now there is a risk that in windy conditions that can get blown around a little bit. The way I'm looking to get around that is um, this farm has a lot of small fields, a lot of overgrown hedgerows like the one behind me so I think by looking around, we can probably find an area where it's a little bit more sheltered, the wind's less of a problem. Also, rather than stalking around and taking longer shots, I'm gonna try and set myself up in an ambush position, try and engineer relatively close shots to start with, but also because I intend to shoot prone, I'm gonna be down low to the ground, the gun's going to be down nice and low to the ground, and also I'm hoping there'll just be less wind down there. So that's the plan anyway. So as I've already mentioned, the gun for tonight is the Zebroia Horticia. Um, it's easier to shoot than it is to pronounce. It's a really nice compact little carbine, nice gun to carry around. It's also got that multi-shot magazine um, and it's got a straight pull bolt. So rather than usually sort of lifting the bolt, pulling it back, pushing it forward, dropping it down again, it's just a nice quick straight pull. Now I doubt that we're gonna need rapid reloading this evening, but it's nice to know that it's there. The scope that I've got on here is the PAO Emerald Compact SWAT. Um, again, it's a, it's a fairly, as the name suggests, it's quite a compact scope. Sits really comfortably on this gun. Uh, it's got mill dot reticle, which helps with hold over and hold under. And it's quite a bold reticle, nice and easy to pick out against most backgrounds. Um, and that's mounted on my usual choice of mounts, sports match mounts, just keeps everything nice and firm and dead straight where it needs to be. Right, so that's the kit and the tactics that I'm hoping to use. Let's go and see if I can find somewhere that can tuck us out of that wind. Right, that, where there were actually a few rabbits out as I approached this spot, but I didn't mess about trying to stalk them for the simple fact that I felt that if I walked them up and walked them in, they would be less spooked. I looked more like a walker than a predator trying to sneak up on them, that's the theory anyway. So hopefully, they'll be more inclined to come back out. Um, I've chosen this field, it's quite a narrow field, and it is quite enclosed, so the wind should be less of a problem here. Also. The sun's in and out, and I'm pretty well shaded by the trees behind me, so in theory that's going to give me a little bit more cover too. So I'm going to get down prone to shoot, as I said earlier, I want to keep the pellets nice and low and hopefully below the worst of the wind. So I'm going to settle in now. Now I haven't actually got a stud on this gun yet to mount a bipod but it's not a problem because if you're caught without a bipod one of the best ways around it is to use a beanbag seat like this. In the past I've used rolled up coats, I've used my backpack before, anything you can use just to give the gun some support, keep the muzzle up over any stems of grass, thistles, docks, stuff like that. It serves the same purpose as a bipod and should do perfectly well this evening. Well, I'm feeling confident, so one preparation I am going to make is to put on the scope cam. So this way, 
if I do get some shots, which as I said, I'm pretty confident I, I will do here. We put in quite a few rabbits when we arrived. Um, you will be able to see them exactly the same as I do. Well, that's the camera on, but one thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about using my beanbag sink instead of a bipod, is that being a relatively solid object, it also gives me a little bit of cover. Those rabbits are emerging at about the same level as me. I'm tucked in behind this. It's like having a hillock in front of me, and that, that is one thing that you don't get with a bipod. So, in fact, I'm so well covered this evening, I'm in the shade, I'm not even going to bother using my head net. Hopefully, we'll get a few chances. Well, that was a very close rabbit. It was a real frame filler in the scope cam. Um, I estimated it just under 20 meters, so actually I had to give the shot a little bit of hold under. Hit it really solidly in the head and it went straight down. Uh, also, fortunately, where that rabbit, where the rabbits are coming out, um, it's much more calm than it is over this side of the field. So the wind isn't as much as a, of a problem as I'd feared. Um, and there was also another rabbit out when I took that shot. It bolted off when the pellet hit home. I can't blame it, it made a hell of a crack. But it just goes to show there's a few rabbits over there. They're eager to come out. So hopefully we'll get a few more chances. There's another one. That one was actually very close to where I shot the first one. It's a little bit further away. I still had to give the shot a touch of hold under. Pellet hit home really solidly. There's another really good clean kill. So it's looking like we could be in for a decent bag of bunnies this evening. Well, that is turning out to be a very productive spot. That was in pretty much the same area again. I think that rabbit sensed us. To be honest, we're both moving about a little bit when we see them emerge. It came out, it froze dead still. Unfortunately for the rabbit, that just presented me with an absolutely static target. It was an absolute sitter, another one in the bag. That's another one. That one was actually a little bit further than the others, probably approaching 30 metres. But fortunately, although the wind's absolutely hammering through these trees behind me from time to time this evening, it is very sheltered over that way, especially down lower to the ground, which is obviously the path that the pellet's taking. And in all honesty, because of that, it was still a relatively straightforward shot.
Well, that was a brilliant shot, if I do say so myself. Bit of a further one again, probably just beyond 30 metres. The rabbit was partially obscured by some stems, and I actually had to thread the pellet through. Now, with the wind this evening, you wouldn't expect you'd get a shot like that, but I hope you can see through the scope cam footage just how still it is at the level that I'm shooting over and where I am taking the shots, where the rabbits are presenting themselves. It's really not influencing the pellet at all because of the spot that we've chosen. And as that one just demonstrated, that was another rabbit completely polaxed. Well, it seems like a good time to wrap it up now. It's been dead for the last half an hour or so and I'm starting to get pretty uncomfortable sprawled out on my belly here. But on top of that, the wind's changed now and it's just whipping across the field. And in all honesty, shooting a sub 12 foot pound 177 in a crosswind, it's gonna get very unpredictable. But I am happy with how it's gone. By picking my spot carefully, for the most of the session, I've been able to take shots that haven't been affected by this wind and we've managed to bag a few rabbits. So I'm eager to get them picked up, prep them for the pot. And what I may even try to do is find another spot. I've got about another hour of light left before it gets dark and maybe I'll even be able to add a few more. Proof there that windy conditions don't have to spoil your shooting as long as you set yourself up in the right place. Now, it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. Nominations have now closed for the Great British Shooting Awards. Taking place at the British Shooting Show next year, the awards will give some long overdue recognition to the products and people that make the shooting industry tick. The shortlists will be revealed on the 1st of November and the awards then go to a public vote. Airguns have their own category but there are also awards for rifles, shotguns, optics, clothing and the heroes of the gun trade. Stay tuned for further details on who's up for an award. If you're looking for Britain's next airgunning star, look no further than James Miller. The 18-year-old pistol shooter was Team GB's only shooting representative at the Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires this month. He finished ninth in the men's air pistol event, only missing out on a place in the final on countback. James has been the British Shooting National School's pistol champion for the last two years and is definitely one to watch. Target Sprint continues to grow in the UK as Yate Outdoor Sports Complex hosted a leg of the ISSF Pro Tour as well as the National Series Final. Britain's men enjoyed big successes with Arno Turner taking gold in the senior race and Morton van der Schie winning in junior men. Germany took a sweep in the women's and team events, and in the National Series final, Stephanie Bradbury was the senior women's champion and Oliver Vass won the men's category. And finally, there could have been a repeat of Airmageddon, in which airgun related channels were taken off YouTube en masse, but this time on Facebook. Members of some shooting-related pages and groups on Facebook reported that they had been closed down or disabled over the weekend, but the crisis was quickly averted thanks to action from the shooting community. On Monday, Basque said that Facebook had restored all the pages and that Facebook had admitted that they were incorrectly flagged and taken down. That was the Egg and Show News. The subject of today's test is pretty exciting. It's the QYS pellet range from the shooting party. Made in China to extremely exacting standards, these pellets are the choice of very serious match shooters. To give you some idea of their pedigree, this ammo has accounted for 10 golds, 4 silvers and 5 bronze medals at Olympic level over recent years. Apart from flathead match pellets, the range also includes domed and pointed variants 
and I've been testing them all this morning. I've not yet had a chance to weigh them to confirm weight consistency or to check head sizes, but Mike Morton is working on a more in-depth review for Airgun Shooter magazine as I speak. What I have been doing is shooting these pellets down a 30 meter windless range in a barn and my early results are very encouraging. I want to concentrate on the everyday type pellets but I will give the competition ones a mention. The top end ones are known as Olympic grade and match grade. Both weigh 8.2 grains and are claimed to have virtually no weight variation. These pellets come in 0.49 and 0.5 millimeter head sizes and are individually hand selected. They're packaged in a hard plastic box that contains two trays with pellets held securely in a foam liner to ensure that there's no risk of them being damaged in transit. The Olympic grade pellets are some of the most carefully made, selected and packaged pellets in the world and they cost £10.99 for a box of 200. The match grade, which are similarly selected and packaged and of an equally high quality, cost £6.99 for 200. My testing wasn't exactly fair for a 10 meter match pellet because I was putting them through a magazine and shooting them through an Air Arms S510 producing a muzzle energy of over 11 foot pounds. Nonetheless, both were putting pellet on pellet at 10 meters. And as far as flathead pellets go, they also held up pretty well over longer range. And with the match grade at 20 meters, I was managing nine millimeter groups. With the Olympic grade, I was getting that down to eight millimeters. The flathead pellets are also available in a more affordable training grade. These also come in 4.49 and 4.5 millimeter head sizes and weigh 8.2 grains. They cost £9.99 for a tub of 500 and appear to be very well made with no sign of any swarf in the tub. Like the two premium pellets, they were incredibly accurate at 10 metres and also impressive at 20 metres, at which I was able to achieve 10 millimetre groups. Grouping opened up significantly over longer range, as I would expect from a flat headed pellet, but going by my 20 metre results, this could be a great round for close to mid-range ratting for which the extra wallop of a flathead pellet could be very handy. If like me you like domed pellets, the domed QYS variant is certainly worth a look. They weigh 8.48 grains and I've been using the 0.5 millimeter version. Just like the others, they're extremely well made and a tub of 500 will set you back £9.99. The performance of these pellets is very impressive and I've been getting five shot groups measuring between seven and eight millimeters from center to center over 30 meters. I'd like to push them harder over longer range but it's blowing an absolute gale today so I've been limited to indoor testing for now. Of all these pellets, it's the pointed ones that have surprised me the most. By and large, pointed pellets don't tend to be very accurate so I try to steer clear of them. I decided to give these ones a try because the quality of manufacture looked fantastic, so I thought they might be okay. They actually turned out to be more than okay. Groups opened up over longer range, but they were great out to 25 meters, at which I was still achieving 10 millimeter groups from center to center with five shots. That's awesome for a pointed pellet, and certainly justifies their price tag of £9.99 for a tub of 500. At the moment, all lines are only available in 177 calibre, though there's talk of two twos coming soon and also a heavier domed pellet in the pipeline. For the time being though, I'd certainly suggest that 177 shooters give the current range a try. I think that domed pellet could be something very special. These pellets have Olympic pedigree and it's great to see that quality extended through the entire range. I really am very impressed with them. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online.
That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.